What's up everybody? I hope you're well. So I decided to make this video because there have been a few changes in my template and nothing major, but with all your questions being what kind of sounds do you use? What kind of libraries do you have and stuff like that? I kind of feel like I owe you guys an update and I don't know, I thought it would be fun to maybe do one of these sorts of videos maybe like once a year roughly in the same kind of period also super important before we jump into the template because i know i would get questions on this yes the template is indeed available for download but only on my patreon and sorry if this sounds like a shameless plug i do always mention stuff like this at the end of the videos but by the time we get to the end everybody clicked off already so <laughs> Yeah, all right, here it is. Uh, this is how the template opens up. Everything is organized in folders. Everything is closed. And as you can see, there's not a huge difference between these templates and what I last showed you guys. It's basically mostly BBC and Cinematic Studio. I believe last year I only had Cinematic Studio strings, but since then I've, you know, added into the template Cinematic Studio Brass and Cinematic Studio Woodwinds as well. And the biggest difference here is not really adding these two libraries into the template because, you know, libraries can come and go but it's how is with how the template is now set up i believe last year i was using you know bbc as my main kind of library while ever since i got cinematic studio libraries like the the whole package except for percussion because it's not out yet i've been finding myself being heavily reliant on these libraries as opposed to BBC, which I still use, but mostly as a complement to Cinematic Studio. Also, something important to be mentioned is that I'm not sponsored by any of the developers and I'm using them simply because I like them. Nobody's telling me to promote their products or any funky business like that. So, um, yeah, the main reason why I've been using Cinematic Studio more than BBC is it's not just the aesthetic, you know, being a studio sound, which is something I've been finding myself liking more and more lately. It's also the fact that it's a lot more flexible and versatile than BBC. They're both very good libraries, but a very different kind of things. I very much like, you know, the cinematic studio legatos and and what you can do with the programming. But I also still really like BBC overall vibe and cohesiveness. And I still use it as a layer on top of, you know, Cinematic Studio. So um, a huge selling point for me to these libraries was the balance. Cause I think it's something I've talked about before. And that's that's always the, the most important part for me, you know, having the overall balance being realistic. And I find these cinematic studio libraries being as close as you can get, really. What I used to do before getting these libraries to balance my template was basically just, you know, play in a few bars of Star Wars or something like that, and then, you know, reference my balance to the actual recording but having something obviously that, that is already being done for you it's a huge time saver and i think it greatly improved the quality of my work with that in mind uh, let me just open up you know the whole all the folders and show you guys what i have inside all the faders as you can see you know this is cinematic studio woodwinds you know with the flutes the oboe all the faders inside the stems are set to zero pretty much the only changes you see throughout the template are basically from bbc some of the changes like over here can be rather extreme and the reason is i basically balanced everything to cinematic studio you know just to make sure that we are getting like a cohesive kind of sound and that we don't have things popping out in an unpleasant kind of way or unrealistic kind of way and that's you know th and that's one of the things that often happens with sample libraries you know oftentimes shorts you know violin shorts and pizzicatos and articulations like that tend to be mixed louder than they're supposed to be 
you know, louder than the actual dynamic layer they recorded for that specific kind of patch. And being Cinematic Studio so consistent, it was just logical for me to, you know, basically mix everything to match the overall Cinematic Studio balance. So basically that's the main difference between this template and the previous one. It wasn't really adding, you know, a couple of libraries. And having a clear reference on what the overall balance should be is particularly helpful when you're trying to balance some trickier articulations across libraries. Let me explain. On BBC Brass, we know the developers recorded only like two dynamic layers. So if I, if I set a fortissimo on CSB as my benchmark, I know for a fact that, you know, the top mezzo piano on a solo French horn from BBC cannot go louder than a fortissimo from CSB, otherwise it will sound very unrealistic. So let me just load this up and show you guys what I mean. This is quite clearly like a mezzo piano kind of thing. I think it might be a little bit loud actually. You see, still making changes. If I open up a, uh, an instance of CSB, same note at the top of the mod wheel. This is a fortissimo. So I don't want this top mezzo piano from BBC to go louder than the fortissimo. So that said, if we scroll at the top of the template, let's, let's, I'm going to show you the stuff that's hidden later. As I said, I have Cinematic Studio uh, Woodwinds and BBC Woodwinds. Then we still have sample modeling brass, which I still really enjoy using. I know it doesn't sound very good out of the box. We talked about this in the previous video as well. The reason why I use sample modeling, it's only one patch that basically allows me to play all sorts of micro articulations without having to key switch. It's very expressive and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it in terms of phrasing. I tend to use more often the French horns and the trumpets as opposed to the uh, trombones and the tuba. And I think the French horns at the moment, sample modeling French horns, are my main horns in the template. I use CSB only to add a little bit of room to, to the samples that are otherwise quite, quite dry. And the placement here was particularly tricky. What I did is kind of specific, is we have a directional mixer at the top of the chain, then an equalizer, you know, cutting a little bit of the lows and the high mids, and then an instance of seventh heaven, which is basically like a reverb. And, and then we have a post EQ. And some of these curves are quite extreme. I've been tweaking these curves forever, ever since I got the library. And, you know, I'm, I'm still not very satisfied by it, but I'm willing to compromise the sound with the playability. All sample modeling are routed to their own output, on which I have other, other effects as well. I have a gain, just basically to boost the overall volume a bit because with with the reverb being an insert and being almost 100% uh, you know mixed in we kind of lost quite a bit of volume so plus 12 dB then we have a directional mixer which I'm not using for panning here I'm mostly using for narrowing the stereo field which got too wide after you know using the reverb then we have another equalizer and at the very end of the chain, we have this, uh, what is this? This is, ah, okay. This is basically some kind of tape emulation, which I basically use to, you know, re reintroduce a little bit of the sparkle and the natural harmonics that we lost from all the carvings and the EQing that we did. And obviously I have different curves across different instruments, but, the overall concept is the same for the trumpets, the trombones, and the tuba and the bass trombone. I'm still not super fond of the trombones, but I do still use them because they obviously being 
by the same developers, they blend very well with the, ref with the rest of the sections. So following sample modeling, we have CSB, very useful. I use them all the time. I like everything about it. The only thing I don't particularly like compared to the other cinematic studio libraries is that for the legato patch, we still have some rather extreme latencies which is something that is not the case for the, for the other two libraries, you know, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds and Cinematic Studio Strings, because with Cinematic Studio Woodwinds, I think there was an update, uh, there was an update and they introduced a new kind of articulation, this, you know, uh, legato, low latency and expressive. And I really enjoyed the low latency mode because that obviously allows me to be able to play. Carrying on, we have BBC Brass. It's usually hidden for some reason. I kind of, I think I misclicked this. Let's put it back the way it was. And again, I use it for very specific kind of stuff. In the middle of the template, we have some stuff. Uh, we have like no output, click, sketch. So basically these are things that are useful to me for when I'm writing. And also here, a little pro tip, something, something very useful for like, I don't know, for this piano patch, for example, if you control click on logic, uh, you can basically enable this little dash on the solo symbol. And that allows you to basically have this patch always enabled, even when you're soloing different instruments. Like for example, let's, I've, I've, I just soloed the timpani over here. I normally wouldn't be able to, to play this patch unless I soloed it, but this is always armed and available for me to play, which is a huge time saver, not having to click across the template all the time. For percussion, I'm still using BBC and at the moment everything is on on the tree microphone, I believe. But some of the instruments have more specific mixes, like for example here, the glockenspiel. I believe I use a little bit of the of the sectional maze. Yes, that's just because I, I, I it's an instrument I use very often, and I want it. I want to add a little bit of closeness to the sound to make it pop out a little bit more. And and the harp and the celeste are kind of specific as well. For the harp, I tend to like a closed sound, and for that, I've used the tree microphone combined with the closed wide and the close wide are also essentially hard panned to the right and to the left. Basically what we get is some close microphone recordings from the sides and the tree in the center. It's very, it's very specific kind of sound. In terms of EQ, I've done something like this, basically cutting a bit of the lows, quite a bit of the lows actually, because because I tend to do a lot of harp glissandos and stuff like that, and I don't want that low rumble to build up. And for the Celeste, uh, I think it should, it should probably be just three microphone with that strange. Let's just put that back to zero three microphone and stereo microphone, which is basically like a closed mic recording as well. Now, pianos. For the piano, I only ever use Cine Piano, which is just fantastic. Out of the box, you get a whole bunch of mixes. They're all very useful. They all sound great. Sometimes I like to use these orchestral mixes, orchestral left, orchestral right. But most of the time, I tend to use the Cine Piano patch, you know, the standard patch. I tend to use it for piano up front, while for something a little bit more orchestral, I tend to use the classical uh, patch because it sounds like uh, it's a little bit further away from you. And about the strings, again, we have Cinematic Studio uh, strings and BBC strings as well. Now, this is the core of my template, but if I I press the H button on my computer keyboard, a whole bunch of extra stuff pop up, like for example, Hollywood Winds, which are fantastic. I use them for runs all the time. It's this kind of sound you heard like a billion times. Everybody has, has them because they sound incredible. And I do occasionally use other stuff like, um, you know, like this minor tries kind of thing. They're pretty cool. 
they're very they're a lot of fun to play this is very decorative stuff but i find that having you know some pre-recorded phrases and things like this can can add an extra layer of realism to the mock-up and following the same logic i have into the template which yes here it is bernard herman composer toolkit which is not is not really recorded pre-recorded phrases but this library is pre-orchestrated and the cool thing about this is that it's being recorded in the room it's not just two different samples put together and i don't know i think it's a tiny detail but sometimes it adds that extra extra character extra flavor that makes i don't know the mock-up sound a little bit more realistic to me but it's a very tiny kind of detail and then scrolling back to the template again i have other instruments that i rarely use like uh, you know bbc english horn and bbc contrabassoon a whole bunch of audio tracks just in case i need to record something live like a guitar or a bass or something like that and then just moving to the percussion again these are samples that i recorded myself you know it's mostly percussion stuff you know weird percussion sounds like this fun little library asmr percussion which I don't know is something is something fun to use sometimes and then Spitfire cinematic percussion if I want to have a more hyped kind of sound I very rarely use it I don't really do this type of music but you basically get some toms and stuff like this I very rarely use it but it sounds very good and I do some actually that's not true I do sometimes use these low booms they sound incredible And there's a whole bunch of them. So that's it. The rest of the piano and plaxi stuff, you know, just, you know, regular stuff like kalimba and harpsichord and toy piano and things that, you know, you would rarely use in an orchestral piece, but, but it's useful to have and it's fun to have these kind of things uh, sometimes. So, um, let me show you how the template sounds like. I know you already know how it sounds like. But just for fun, I just wrote a little something for you guys to show you the new balance and, and everything we have been talking about. So let me close this and open the project. Also, something I forgot to mention very quickly. Uh, I, was, I was briefly talking about some of the microphone positions before in BBC. What I'm using at the moment is basically just mix one for strings, brass and woodwinds and the tree microphone for percussion, just to give it a little bit of extra depth. So this is how the template sounds like out of the box without any extra mixing. So yeah, that's the overall sound of the template. Um, in terms of, you know, effects and stuff, it's just really regular stuff, you know, mostly EQing and just, you know, a little bit of a reverb. For that, I believe I have a couple of different reverbs. I'm using uh, the Space Designer with uh, with this Todeo. I believe that's mostly for brass. And and then the Boston Hall on Seven Heaven for the rest of the things, but you know it's very light. It's mostly for blending purposes, but it's barely noticeable. It just kind of blurs the edges a little bit, if you know what I mean. And as you can see, if we if we isolate a couple of the things, this is my main sound for the strings, right? <laughs> and if I add BBC, it just adds a little bit of extra depth, really, to the sound. So it kind of works like a reverb. For the rest of the stuff, it's mostly sample modeling and and cinematic studio brass. They sound they sound like this if we put them together.
it's a very natural kind of blend. That's that's the that's the reason why I like to combine the, these two libraries together because both having a drier kind of sound, they naturally blend together very well. And for the woodwinds, I do sometimes still use BBC occasionally on its own because being cinematic studio woodwinds a little bit closer, you know, a smaller kind of space. If I want to just push the woodwinds a little bit further away. Uh, for me, I just kind of uh, tend to use BBC. While uh, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds adds a little bit of punch. <laughs> That's super strange. Um, what did I do? I can't remember. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We already talked about all the percussion before. Maybe the last thing to mention is the output. The output is very normal stuff. You know, I've got a gain which I haven't used for this piece specifically because it's pretty loud already. Then equalizer, just smiley brighty kind of curves. And then this is basically just like a like an imager just to widen the sound a little bit more just make it sound a little bit more modern you know and then a limiter at the end of the stage just to protect myself protect my hearing in case something something goes wrong and i get some kind of feedback coming from the template and stuff like that and so that's it the routings is still the same as the previous template i have basically one stem per instrument they all have their own specific output but they also have their own specific bus, just in case I I then later need to, you know, print all the stems into audio. So basically I have some audio tracks over here, which are taking the in from, from essentially the bus. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I've been talking for a while. And I hope I answered some of the questions you you have been asking me. But if you do have some further questions or want some clarification on something I talked about today, just leave a comment below, I will answer it. All right, that's it for today. Like the video and subscribe if you're new. And I'm just going to leave you with this piece.